to believe. Didn't mean that they didn't have some belief. <coughs> Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? Ought not these things that you've seen for the last 40 years going on, ought these things not have been? Surely it will be. Because of violation of his covenant. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them. Remember, this is after the resurrection. Book that we're reading out of right wasn't even in existence. For another 20, 30 years. Half of the Ephesus church age was basically built without it. So, what is all these scriptures? What do you expound unto people on? What's your response whenever they say the Old Testament? Something that's musty and discarded and thrown out. I guarantee you, if you do what he did right here, and, and you're addressing another quote-unquote believer, probably they're going to get offended and they ain't never going to see him again. Say it over and over, happened at the market. All you did was correct false doctrine. You expound on, on the scriptures. It's just not confined to a building. You are the temple. And the temple, the word of God, where God dwells, should go everywhere. So the Shekinah glory should be on your head. all the scriptures concerning himself. And they drew nigh, and this wasn't a short conversation if he did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to take the walk seven and a half miles. <laughs> oh, wow. And when they drew nigh unto the village where they went, which was a mess, and he made as though he would have gone farther. Interesting. Why? Because Jesus will only tarry where somebody who is sincere for him to tarry. Not desiring for him to tarry, but serious about for him to tarry. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Somehow or another, Jesus didn't know that they would do that. So in other words, our actions speaks. It's here. It's not, it's, it's not what you're saying who you are or where you think you stand. It's what you're doing. Every day.
And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed, not blessed it. It is not in the original uh, language. Bless the Father. He took bread and blessed, broke, um. and gave. He did just what we do every Saturday evening. That's what he did. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he, oh, and, their, and their eyes were opened. Who's controlling the seeing of the individuals? Who's controlling your sight based on a law? God. If you are, are you yet without understanding? Then what God is saying today, get up, look in that big mirror right there, and what do you see? Yourself. Here's his character. Jesus didn't compromise with them. Their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them who were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed. Hmm. What happened? It doesn't sound like the same guys at the beginning of this story. He said he was going to rise the third day, and this is the third day. And we've heard stories that this took place, but you know, I just, I just can't believe it. What are you wrestling with in unbelief? You wrestling with that you can't be the terminal generation? Are you wrestling with your kids are not going to grow up? He is even at the door. So close I can hear the door hinges squeaking like the cottage door. You're not. Not going to happen. You're not going to grow up and get married and have kids. Not going to happen. What are you wrestling with in unbelief? See, we're we're going to we're going to see. Don't don't tell me you believe something when your life is exuding something different. Now, and we're going to see here. The manifestation of belief. Eventually. Saying that the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared. Saying the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. Their demeanor changed. Mm -hmm. Their countenance changed. It was no longer sad. They were no longer in fear. They were no longer in despair. The day of the Lord is at hand. I don't see a whole lot that really <coughs> Too 
much stuff. <coughs> and as they thus spoke, <coughs> Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Shalom be unto you. But they were terrified and afraid. <coughs> Is reading the scriptures terrifying you? About the last days? About our day? Now, this, this, this was the rest of the group. This wasn't the ones that went from doubt and unbelief to I believe. So if you believe, your countenance won't prove it. <clears throat> As it grows darker out there, your light gets brighter. That's, that's a law of God. <coughs> Why, why are we having bouts? Why are you seeing all across the country power outages and things going on? Why? I'm coming. I'm coming. Make sure the light that's in you is not darkness, which would be your perceived light. And they supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Thoughts of what? Well, what does it mean? They were terrified. So what, why, why did Israel at the base of the mountain, the majority of the community, fear? You said it. Unbelief. You follow me? Unbelief. Jesus said, I've told you all of these things ahead of time. Because God wanted everybody to come up the mountain. Mm -hmm. Originally? Originally, right. Yeah. <clears throat> why does fear, why does doubt, why does discouragement, why does despair, why does lack of faith why, why is it in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet. This is his resurrected body, by the way, that still contains the physical scars that will never, ever go away. Never. Charismatics. Never. Never. Matter of fact, at his physical second coming where he splits the Mount of Olives wide open, they will see who? Him. Him whom Him. they Pierce. pierced. How are they going to know that? <clears throat> hey, you know, I got my appendix out. Here, see the stars. Yeah. I didn't get my appendix out. You crazy. See how ridiculous that is? That's how ridiculous unbelief is. Why the exhortation, take heed if you think you're standing, lest you fall. Because despite popular preaching, the worst thing for you to know is that which you think you know for sure. You're going out a while. The worst thing for you to know is those things that you think you know for sure. Why? Because it leaves no place for correction. None. Showed him his hands and his feet. 
while they yet believed not for joy and wondered. Now, you know, we, we can sit here and whip up on these people, but what about you? I have spoken as plainly as I know how to speak about the season that we are in for years. <clears throat> And just as God, all through scriptures, when you obey what you hear, what does God do? He expands the revelation. You obey that, He expands the revelation. That's what happened to Daniel. And we're going to see him here in a minute. So where are you? Believe not. You believe some? Believe in part? Understand a little? And he said unto them, Have you any meat here? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. Or to tell you something about a diet. And of honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. All things must be be fulfilled. Then, now. Laodicea, last church age, before the rapture of the church, will be completely, totally leavened. These things must be fulfilled. that all things must be fulfilled which were written, and again, in the Law of Moses, and in the Prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. The writings. The writings. Must be. You're some kind of special PC that, that God's going to give you a discount card that, oh, I know who you are, so it doesn't apply. I remind you that Ezekiel wasn't even called into his ministry until five years into captivity. Him and Daniel both spent most of their life in captivity. The judgment of God upon a land. And Ezekiel was called to who? After Judah, and, and, and well, when we get to Hosea, we'll see it again. After they saw everything going on in Jerusalem, in the northern kingdom. And God calls a man five years into that and tells him, stubborn people, they're going to refuse to turn. Even... Even seeing. What have you been seeing and still refuse to turn? That, that was a guy, was it a guy or a lady yesterday? Somebody made the reference about Mother Nature again. And I said, I don't believe in Mother Nature. Father God. And I can tell he, he didn't care because he just kind of chuckled and walked off.
But I hear it. You don't, you don't want to mess with Mother Nature. Mm-hmm. You know? Do you see what's been going on according to the Scriptures, but yet you still refuse to believe that you're the last generation? You think you can violate God's rehearsal times of the feast days of an appointed celebration to rehearse and to remember and to look forward to. And somehow you're going to excuse yourself and and you're going up. I don't know where you buy uh, fire retardant suits today, but if you want to stay in that mindset, you better go get you one. This book says that hell has been opened wide for my people. Israel, same way. Refute, they they wanted, because the false prophet was attacked. No, God, we're just going to be in captivity two years, Jeremiah 29, and we're coming back better than we were before. Ain't going to be no 70 years. Don't listen to the not heads. After all, look. All of us over here in the masses are speaking the same word. You going to listen to the one not head? It's where we are. It's where we are. All things must be fulfilled. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. It's the only way, guys. No amount of sitting in a chair, no amount of reading the Bible out loud, no amount of nothing. You're not meeting the condition for him to open up understanding to you. It's not going to happen. But remember, it was joy. See, we're in the darkest of times on the horizon, but you should be joyful. That goes against human nature. Yep, sure does. And you should have a passion to those where you are planted, bloom, and spread. You may be the only truthful messenger those people will ever hear. It doesn't matter if they are willfully sitting in a congregation, staying there, refusing to get up and go somewhere else and move. We have been made kings and priests unto our God. Kings and priests. Kings do what? Rule. Rule. Priests do what? Pray. They intercede for the people. So in Christ, you're a king and a priest. You rule and you pray. Pray for what? <clears throat> Understanding. And he said him then, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance, a complete change of mind, turning around, going in a totally opposite direction. And the remission, in other words, notice what's prior to remission or forgiveness of sins. Repent. You look at Jesus' first words. Repent. Repent. Remember, he was building church. He started with repent, and he ends with repent in the seven churches of Asia.
should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. See, you can actually, you, you, you never know where an individual that you're preaching to or sharing light upon is going to wind up being or going. You don't know who they know. This is not real. It can apply, but it's not in a box that that everybody is to go to all the nations. But you know, by you sharing light, great possibility you will, because of one person touching another, touching another, touching another, and another, and another. Yep. People you don't even know. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power on high, which we know that was fulfilled exactly on the Feast of Pentecost. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and guess what he did? He did, out of Numbers chapter 7, the priestly blessing of what God commanded Moses on how to bless the children of Israel. That's what he did. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem. How? With great joy. joy. So your belief system will be manifested by great joy. And when you intercede for a people and begin to pray for blind eyes and lack of understanding and that they don't understand, there'll be tears at time will fall, but God says, I'm gathering them in a cup. Why? Because his word does not return void and there'll be a day that he'll show what the prayer of tears that produced. you won't see in this life because why? You have to believe all things will be fulfilled. So the joy set before him, he endured. What about you? See, your your belief system will produce joy. You will believe in the midst of endurance. The cross was not pretty. It was not fun. But he endured it. With great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God, so be it. Where's the temple? So you be in the temple, you're continually in the temple, praising and blessing God with joy. There's a time for sackcloth and ashes. To everything there is a season. So, Open their eyes. And we see this is in weeks past in Revelation 1 and Isaiah 11 2, the seven spirits of God, which includes what? Understandings. Which is insight. That means a discerning capacity. A discerning capacity of completeness. You get it. That's understanding. 
by the Spirit of God. And see, it's, it's Him. You, you don't get it. You know, you got two cr groups of people today in the church, those that never studied the Bible and those that think that they are great for all of the countless hours that they spend in their Bible. Both are without understanding. They can get up and teach a seminar, all these wonderful courses and blah, 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 but people are not changed. How do I know that? Because if you're speaking the truth, somebody's going to get offended. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to get happy. Doesn't mean that there ain't going to be some happy slappies. But somebody's going to get mad. Somebody, they're going to get mad. Because the Holy Spirit reasons of sin, righteousness, and judgment to come, and nobody wants to hear about that today. Flesh despises that. Sin, righteousness, judgment to come. That's a church service. And if he is there, it will be addressed. Second Timothy 2. And the Lord give you understanding in all things. Did Paul exhort Timothy? Get the scriptures out, Timothy, and just study, 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 study. And in all of that studying, you'll get understanding. Did he say that? Get this Bible study. Get that Bible study. Oh, there's just all kinds of good Bible studies out there. You get through this, you'll understand. Consider what I say, and the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even unto bonds. In other words, because he spoke the truth, Paul was in constant issues. Jesus was in constant issues. Not with the pagans of the world, but with the religious. The Lord give you understanding. So Paul's prayer for Timothy done that? Or have you just pointed your finger, your little bony little finger at somebody who has no understanding? Now granted, outside the covenant, impossible. You, you can't, you can't pray that. You can pray Jeremiah 9 that they come to know and understand him, but they haven't got there yet. You, you think that you're going to go from here and, and speak things or repeat things that's spoken here and because it's truth and people just open you with wide open arms, then you're in Never Never Land. Having the truth does not change an individual's perspective on things. That person has to hear and act on what they've heard. If they don't, never, never will understanding come. Not ever. It's the law of God.
It's like what he said in verse 5. If a man strives for masteries and is not crowned, except that he strive lawfully, doing it the right way. Prior to that, he talks about being temperate, self-controlled, disciplined, to do what is necessary to do. Okay. Daniel 9. The entire chapter of Daniel 9 is a, is a prayer. Something that should be greatly studied remembering that Daniel is in captivity at this time. But we're going to look at some focal verses here. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this, this is a part of his prayer, by the way, and Daniel is praying it back to who? God. To God. To God. Is it a fitting prayer for today? Mm -hmm. If you truly understand, you're the terminal generation. If you truly understand of where you are in Bible prophecy, and it will be fulfilled, and it is on a timeline. For it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. This is for us past, this is for us present, and this is for us yet future. All that has come upon us, all that is coming upon us. In other words, this should be your explanation. To You ought to know how to give the right answer to anybody who asks. But see, without the Spirit of God, you can't even remember for Him to bring it up for you to speak it. Yet made we, all this evil has come upon us, yet we made not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities understand your truth. People without understanding, whether it be yourself, wherever you are in your walk, you have not understanding because of iniquities. Iniquities is a willful, known choice. You know what he's been saying to do. Therefore, has the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us? Charismatics, hello, you blessing fanatics. Because of a people's disobedience, God's not watching upon the blessing. The Lord washed upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he does, for we obeyed not his voice. Doesn't matter how black it gets in the days ahead. God has watched upon the evil and he is bringing it upon this planted planet. 
Why? For we have not obeyed. obeyed his voice. And we're not seeing a day go by now that it's not an extreme. No. And I mean, we saw last week in Amos where God first spoke to the heathen nations around Jerusalem. And pronounced judgment on them. You know... Whether it's Japan, tsunami, you know, it doesn't matter. It, uh, what's going on right now? The system coming up through. Really doesn't matter. It's righteous. It's righteous judgment. It's a righteous cause. I read this week where... Um and it went back to what we talked about because they did not return to me. I brought this stuff on them. There are now 4,000 cancer cases from the 9-11 survivors. And one was quoted saying that 9-11 uh, breathed cancer into me. I was healthy before that. You know, you got ears to hear to translate how something's being said today. Not if you're not walking in all his ways. You won't see it, you won't hear it, you won't understand it. And it's not because it's the will of God. Okay, Daniel 10. Page over, maybe. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel. This would be uh, the angel Gabriel sent to Daniel to help him to understand which today you have the Holy Spirit of God to help you understand. You do not have to have an angelic visitation in order for you to be led into all truth. Then he said unto me, Fear not, for from the first day that you did set your heart to understand Daniel and to chasten yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I am come for your words. Can you honestly say right here, right now, that that's you? This very hour? Your, your life is a manifestation of setting your heart to understand. To understand. <clears throat> setting your heart to obey, hear, obey, and do. To hear, obey, and do. Because <clears throat> as we have seen in days gone by, Daniel 12, 10, that's confirmed in the gospel by Jesus. <clears throat> Many will be purified and made white and tested. But the wicked will do wickedly, and none of the wicked will understand. But the wise builder, the one building his house on the rock, that hears the word of God and obeys it, will understand. You can't put the understanding in yourself. You can't put it in another person. It's all individual. No amount of books and nothing. No amount of listening to these uh, messages over and over and over and over and over again. 
Not going to do it. You can, you, memor, you can memorize the text and not understand a bit of it. He opens your eyes so that you may understand the Scriptures based on what you have done with your faith. And that's not works. It's faith. It's doing what God said to do. How God said to do it. And as you see that day approaching, do not forsake the gathering of the together of yourselves and even more so even more so <clears throat> because it's getting darker out there and if you forsake this gathering together it will suck you into its vortex because life for whatever reason has told you the father of all lies well I just don't need to go I don't have all the answers I'm just doing my part because I'm definitely not a pastor an evangelist a teacher I teach but I don't have the intellect of a teacher gift. And I don't plant churches. I'm not an apostle. Don't even pretend to be. I do my part. When I tell you, when I tell you something, you will open your mouth and you will speak it whether they hear or refuse to hear. For they are a rebellious house. <laughs> But when I close your mouth, I will cause your tongue to stick to the roof of your mouth. And for me to gather in a little flock and become a pastor and a shepherd and to do all of that, I would be as big out of the will of God as most of the church is. I'm not a pastor. But I don't think any of us here can say that you went out seeking us. Mm -hmm. No, I, I for years, I mean, people, I, I can, why don't you start a church? The last thing this planet needs another is another church started. Jesus didn't, I mean, what did he, he, you know, he just made the opportunity, <laughs> made his kind of difference. But see, you, you ought to be the most joyous person anybody work, walks into. But are you telling people why you're so happy and joyful? Maybe Wayne would listen to you when he wouldn't listen to me. He says he does. Let's see his actions say otherwise. Who do you say that? Who do they say? Well, some say he's a good man. You'd be shocked if I got my old fat Bible down there and showed you scriptures at my calling at what God. Said. That 90% has already been fulfilled before I ever saw the first one. And if 90% has already been fulfilled, I already tell you something, guys. Short. <clears throat> and I've told you for years, even before I even knew when I was going out, you see me head out of here, 
you better realize it's even at the door. Yep. So, either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For you are known by your fruit. That's for you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it divides and cuts. It's a two-edged sword. Both sides are sharp. But one seals the wound when it's cut and makes it whole again. As Hebrews exhorts us to lift up, lift up the hands that hang down and the knees that are feeble. Make straight paths for your feet. Lest you be turned out of the way. This exhortation was to believers. Get on with it. Get on with it. Don't let the cares of this world get you off track especially in these days of teshuva. Satan is a master of distraction. Whether this trumpet is a raptured event or not, time will only tell. But you best not take it lightly. It's a day set aside it's a Sabbath day. It's a consecrated day. It's an awesome day. I feel for you who choose to ignore it. Unto those that look to him will he come a second time. If you're not looking, you're not going. That's the truth. Noah wasn't surprised. Lot wasn't surprised. Neither will we be surprised. For those that look unto him, will he come a second time? It will surely be. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the provision of the bounty of this land and the food prepared in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.